There was a time when Lecrae was a good source of encouragement with promoting healthy things like the church. Lecrae deconstructed and now is attacking it. Gold grills getting made. Shout out to Scotty ATL. You know what I'm saying? Free tattoos, uh, 116 tattoos, fried chicken, you know, macaroni and cheese, us rapping, my homie Tadashi teaching. What T that? And that was that was like that's church for folks, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're gonna talk about what happened to Lecrae here on All Things Theology. He might be music. All things theology, all things theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace. Welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub, and today we are going to talk about what happened to Lecrae, deconstructionism, the church. We're going to talk about it all. I was recently sent this video about Lecrae talking about his deconstruction. It's like an hour long video where I thought it was very informative, just kind of what where he is, his state of thinking and things like that. Um, and also, I, I am very troubled by people who promote this de Christian deconstruction. Again, I'm going to share my thoughts uh, deeply into that. Guys, I, I just want to get right into it. So let's talk about it. You're deconstructed. Mm hmm. When was that? Um, I deconstructed around around 2016 yeah 2016 i feel like it was like i i was i i was struggling in 2016 by 2017 i was out i was just i'm done you know with this whole particular thing and a lot of it had to do with um a lot of backlash from uh, it's a long journey i mean that's a whole conversation within itself you know what i mean <laughs> like but it's a long journey and i i love sharing how I got there and how I overcame it. And I understand when people are de-churched or they're just not interested, um, I get it. And I'm like, hey man, um, walk with me, you know, walk with me. Like here's a step in the journey of like processing what you want to do with faith. Like here's a step in that, in that space where you got somebody who understands, who's not trying to berate you, who's not trying to say, how dare you? You know, who's just saying, listen, I understand. I understand why you wanted to walk away. I understand why you did walk away. And um, I did too, but you know, I went on a journey and I found that um, Jesus is worth it. Now, some of the infrastructures that people have built around Jesus should be burned to the ground, but Jesus is absolutely worth it. Very interesting answer uh, that Again, I do have problems with some of that answer. It's just kind of like point to me as I mean, I, I would take someone to scripture because even then I, you, you could follow me. And <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, his issue of deconstruction. Now, many people don't really know what deconstruction is and they kind of just go with the flow like, oh, yeah, deconstruction. I want to get all the get rid of all the bad stuff. Well, deconstruction is a, a secular postmodern philosophy by Jock Derrida that uh, just earlier before any of us were alive right and his issue was to break down meaning uh break down the issue of language the what's on the text and then what it means and things like that it's it's heavily rooted in, in postmodernism. and when i first saw deconstruction going on it was a lot of people claiming hey i want nothing to do with uh, christianity and they were literally just going to like atheism or agnosticism or something like that pretty much some kind of postmodern philosophy then i saw christians kind of adopting it and saying oh yeah this is cool we want to deconstruct the faith uh, kind of barring a lot of the similar ideologies uh that definitely was lecrae and it still kind of seems to be where he is now and we're going to show just kind of just some issues where it comes up practically so let's get to this next clip is it okay to love jesus and not go to church all right so let me give my answer. I say absolutely not. If you love Jesus, you will love his church and you will desire to uh, fellowship with his people. Uh, you know, there are many people who are anti-church today uh, that just, hey, I, I, I love Jesus. I cuss, drink and smoke a little bit. I love Jesus. Right. We in that kind of culture today where people just want to disconnect themselves from the authority of Scripture, the authority even of the church and don't want to submit themselves under the elders, even though that's what the Bible says. Hebrews 13, 7, Hebrews 13, 17. And so many people kind of have that attitude. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, I love Jesus and I, I'll just do church. On, I'll do just church, me, me in church at home. You know, which I would argue that's not biblical, but this section really got interesting. Church 
as an institution in America is not the the thing that God was talking about in the scriptures, right? The or, or the institution that we see in a lot of the world, right? Church is a community, is a body of people. It is not an institution um, that has oratory and a stage and music and, uh, you know, just the whole like theatrical style of it is not like that's a, that's not an ancient prescription. Now, I'm kind of confused on his answer because in one sense, he it kind of sounds like he's talking about the mega church, which <laughs> obviously I would agree. But even in that, there's some form of it, which it is biblical. Uh, but then he's kind of later going to flesh this out. And so that's why, again, I want to be fair to him as much as possible. That's more of a current phenomenon than it is this ancient prescription of this like theatrical oratory style where someone has to be an amazing orator and you, you know, you got this. But notice the kind of the, the straw man's like, I've never, ever heard anyone say you need to be an amazing orator to be a preacher again. I mean, I mean. The, even the way he describes some of this is kind of interesting, but the disagreement is about to come. So stay tuned. Like Broadway esque type of thing happening on Sunday. I think that's more of, of a consumer, like Western capitalistic economic driven thing. And that's not what God's intention is. God's intention is a body, a group of people who need each other, who rely on each other, who confide in each other, who have different gifts, different abilities, and they use them collectively together to one, demonstrate that God is amazing to the outside world, to usher in the kingdom as Jesus was doing, to support one another um, because there's different needs. And then there's order within this fellowship, right? Paul lists out like the order that he'd like to see re regarding it. And so that's why there's like elders and so on and so forth. So now I'm glad he mentioned that. I wanted to play him say that, right? Because he, he mentions because I would argue you, you don't have a local church if you don't have elders and deacons, if you don't have organization. I mean, the Bible lays out how a church is the function. If you don't have this now, now many people want to have a kind of broad definition of church where it's just the body of believers. And obviously, if you are a Christian, you are of God's church. But also God has established locally where people are to meet in fellowship and he is established in that way elders and deacons and many people want to have the first without having the second and i would argue having the second is a uh, indicative or uh, it's a, a fruit of what's what's happened first god places you in his church and then you are to join his uh you know church he has uh given authority to on earth and so but yeah i would i would agree with that but he's going to seemingly contradict himself and and kind of back off of that a little so let's listen that's what church is supposed to be we don't really see a lot of that um you don't see that i i, I see it um, i mean maybe you don't but i i do see that happening um, in our let me let me just say this god is still building his church so you better be seeing it society we see people showing up on sunday to come to a play or a Broadway presentation, they're disconnected from one another. There's not really genuine fellowship. You don't know if you'll see the same people from week to week. There's no real connectivity or genuine relationships. So a lot of churches, institutions have had to create these things called community groups. Now, let me just say this, because he's right on this issue, because this is a big problem in the mega church. The problem is the mega church is um, actually not everybody's experience. Although it is largely placed on TV, TV and things like that, most people who go to church don't go to mega churches. Um, your average size church from most churches, go look this up. It's like 100 people, like your average. That means most people are probably going to a small church. Um, so, yes, this is a problem in the mega church. So but I, I, my, my fear is that people make this the norm. Right. You, you see this with uh, people who don't go to church at all. See, all, all y'all want is money. Y'all got these big old churches. I'm like, bro, my church is like 100 people like <laughs> this, not big business in the church where, where I'm at. And so but people the world does this kind of broad brushing, right, where they kind of, uh, you know, 
broad brush the church as everybody's just going to mega churches and everybody's filthy rich if you're a pastor. It's like, well, that's actually not the normative experience of 90% of people even in America and definitely not in the world, right? Hoping to facilitate some community, but that even becomes awkward because now you're forcing people to connect and like jive together instead of like an authentic way of living amongst each other. And so I, I, I get it. I get why people struggle with that. And if that's not a problem for you and you can find some resolve and, and that works for you, then praise God. You know, but all of us can't get around needing to have fellowship with other believers uh, to have a group of people that we're so interconnected with that, man, they can challenge us, encourage us, call us up to a higher standard or tell us like, hey, we see this and rally together to 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 live out righteousness in society. And now I wanted to put all this because people say, well, hey, you're all you're doing right now is agreeing with what he's saying. Well, because I don't want I want to be fair and I don't want to put. You know, I don't want to be accused of, well, you didn't put this in there when he said this earlier in the interview. So, again, this is all for me trying to be as fair as possible to Lecrae. Irving people like we all that's what the church is supposed to be. Um, and so I get it. You know, I mean, but when we're in a sense, we're like exiles. You know, when the church was exiled, when when they were scattered amongst the world, they just had to meet at somebody's house and like get together and get through in the text and make it happen. If you go to China, you're not going to see you know, St. Emmanuel's Baptist church. You're going to see people in an apartment getting together. Yeah, that's because they're in persecution. I mean, again, if you I, I don't really care if you have a name on top of your church on the front of the building. That's just I, I believe it's just a pragmatic place so people know what church it is. Right. Uh, but yeah, they're facing persecution. So, of course, they don't have you know, maybe these other things. They don't have a building. They don't have some of these other things that we can have. Um, but I guess what? If they weren't being persecuted, I'm pretty sure they would meet in a building rather than someone's small little home or apartment. I mean, once you grow so big, I mean, you got to have some kind of, I mean, place that you, unless you're going to have, uh, you know, 60 people in a small living room apartment, you're going to be too stuffed. You, you know, so these things are practical, uh, you know, things that, you know, for the church to meet at, right? not one of necessity, but interesting on the low underground and it's still effective and i know because i've been there and i've done it right um but man honor the lord you know honor god it's not about like oh man i did i didn't i haven't been to the institution with a good speaker in a long time no but are you connected to people who love jesus are you See, see, right there is where I have the problem. And then we're going to flesh this out and get him more into it. He's so, hey, I haven't been to the institution lines with a good speaker, which is kind of uh, adding on. I mean, whether it's a good speaker or not, pastor. Right. Um, he, but then he says, you know, that you haven't been to that. But are you are you just gathering people? So he almost makes it seem like, hey, that's OK if you're not doing the first as long as you're doing the latter. So, if hey, if you meet up with people at Starbucks, it's all good. You've done church. Which people take Matthew 18, you know, where two or three or more are gathered. He didn't use that, just to be fair. But generally, people take that out of context. It's not talking about two Christians meeting up. That's actually talking about God giving his stamp of approval on church discipline when the elders meet. you got to do the whole context study. But we're going to get more into his view on the church. So let's get into it. I think deconstruction is, is like a—it's become like, um, again, words, semantics can get misconstrued you know, can create arguments. So it's like a lot of times it's about what is meant by the person who's saying it, right? In culture, there's a lot of terms and a lot of words that didn't originate with negativity, right? We, I would argue from a Christian perspective, deconstruction originated originally, uh, uh, negatively because of who invented it. It was a postmodern person is, uh, you know, trying to break down the language is, is, is not rooted in a Christian thought. And I would argue that's what was the rise of it when it came, when I started seeing all these uh, atheists saying they're deconstruction from Christianity. So it's actually pretty consistent there. Christians adopted it and tried to make it some kind of good thing. And what, what it generally meant was they were going to liberalism. Made them negative. When I'm saying deconstruction, well, I'll say this, when most millennials say deconstruction, what they're saying is they have decided to tear down their belief system. That's right. And uh, leave the faith. many of them are saying, hey, 
what does life without Jesus look like? What is morality? What does um, marriage, all these particular things look like if I do away with this faith that I had in Jesus? That's what, what is meant. And I'm, I would say I did that as well. Um, Which shows that's what deconstruction generally it is. It's more consistent with that. There are a lot of pitfalls for me in doing that that I can definitely get into. But what what I believe is is healthy deconstruction. Now, he's going to say this is healthy deconstruction. Now, we're going to pay attention to that. This is his healthy deconstruction. What he's talking about here is keeping Christ as the foundation. He says he's the cornerstone and then tearing down these walls around him that have been built by our societies and civilizations that have way more culture and tradition than they have truth in them, right? A lot of people will say, you know, um, little cliche things like cleanliness is next to godliness. When the blessings come, go up, the praises come down. God never said that, the, the culture said that, right? So get rid of those things. The culture told you that those things are true. Or somebody may say, uh, don't forsake the, you know, the, the Hebrew says, don't forsake the fellowship. And what the society tell, is telling you is you didn't go to church on Sunday. That's not what that means. It means don't isolate yourself from people who love Jesus and love you. It doesn't mean you didn't go to church on Sunday. You don't. That's not what that means. So that's what the culture has told you it meant. And they're wrong. Get rid of it. So. I would argue, no, he's wrong about that. That does mean gather together. Now, whether you do it on Sunday, Saturday, or let's, don't be a Jehovah's Witness, but you know what I mean. I'm not, I'm not as concerned about the day, although I think Sunday is, has been a historical uh, gathering day for Christians. And so I, I would argue for that. But hey, if someone told me that, hey, man, our, our church service is on Thursday, I wouldn't berate them. Hey, amen, you're gathering. Hebrews absolutely is referring to that. One of the things he did, I, I don't think I put it in here. One of the things he does do is try to say, well, the early Christians weren't doing this. They weren't meeting together and having a church service. Uh, I would argue the Bible actually says they were. And two, historically, there's no question that was happening. Let me actually show you something. Let me, matter of fact, let me, uh, let me give you a healthy resource. This here book is 2000 Years of Christ, Christ Power by Nick Needham. This is volume one. He has five volumes. I've read them all. Great book. If you're looking to get into church history, this book will be a blessing. This volume series will be a blessing. Uh, uh, Christmas is coming up. Wives, you want to bless your husband? I'm not getting paid for this free endorsement. Get this book. OK, uh, in this book, he on pages 66 through 75, he establishes a, a fairly typical church service that was happening. Uh, by early Christians. Let's go through some of the things he points out. I got kind of got some outlines here. Uh, one was the service of the word. Now, they met for a long time, three hours at least. Uh, they had kind of different kind of sections of service, but I'm just going to give you the part one. Notice how they would do church service and notice how fairly similar it was. It is to most of what goes on today in church. Um, a opening greeting by bishop and response by congregation. Uh, often the bishop would say, the Lord be with you and the congregation will respond and with your spirit. You know, some churches say God is good to the saints all the time. You know, uh, Old Testament scripture reading would happen uh, psalm or a hymn. So they would sing songs. New Testament scripture reading psalm or a hymn. So they would sing again. A New Testament scripture reading for the second time. A sermon was uh, delivered by the bishop while seated and then dismissal of all but baptized believers. Then they would take the uh, communion um, and then there would be a benediction. Guys, doesn't that sound very similar to what happens in our churches? I mean, but but again, the, the Bible actually prescribes many of these things as well. Um, uh, communion is observed, Acts 20, uh, verse 7, prayers offer, offered up, 1 Corinthians 14, 15 through 17, songs being sung, uh, Ephesians 5, 19, uh, offering, uh, not to be confused with a tithe, 1 Corinthians uh, 16, 2, scriptures were read, Colossians 4, 16, and the word of God is proclaimed, Acts 27. So this isn't some later practice that kind of people just kind of developed. Again, God has always uh, cared about his institution, the church and the order of it. 
And so I don't know what Lecrae's getting all this stuff was because he, he appealed a lot in this in his video to about the ancient Near Eastern practice. Yeah, they weren't doing church like this. But I want to play a few clips where he actually defines or talks about the church. And this is talk about not being biblical. This is anti-biblical how he defines church. So let's let's listen to this. I feel like church is like by the way, this is him and 1K Few when the, after they released his, the album, uh, No Church in the Wild. And some of the most unbiblical interviews uh, were said. But I'm going to listen. We're going to play two clips to show you this. People don't paint the church to be a building. You know what I'm saying? It's like church is bigger than a building. Yes. Wow. Church is in us. This church right here. This church right here. It really is. Yeah. So 1K Few is, hey, this church right here. Some stage interview. Uh, clear, clearly this is church, right? It's church right here. Someone said this is church, church and us. Uh, yeah, that's totally not biblical. Man, Greg, I gotta come at you. I just, I, I'm gonna be one thousand with y'all, man. Just being real, like mm. a lot of people use the verse. I forgot what, where it's at. That might be Hebrews. Do not forsake the, the, the fellowship, right? Mm -hmm. but that verse is is not about going to a building on Sunday. That verse is forsaking connect. Now, I would agree. The point is, they meet. The building is just a practical <laughs> reason to get out of the elements. I mean, hey, if you want to meet outside in 100 degree heat, 20 degree cold, hey, all all for it. Go do it. The point is we meet together. The building is just the location we do it at. Thing with the people who love God. Now, in our culture, in the Western world, we meet. And, and let me just say this. It's with elders and deacons. It's with the order which God has established in the pastoral epistles. On Sundays. You know what I'm saying? So that's a, that's an easy route to connect with folks. But it's not about that. What it's about is it's kind of like what Scotty was saying is what does your relationship with God look like? What does that look like? And and are you are you tuning that up? You know what I'm saying? And, and because a lot of people I know a lot of people who done with church, but they also done with growing. You know what I'm saying? And wow. so I'm like, you ain't found a better you ain't gonna find a better solution than Jesus out here. Ain't nothing. Oh, yeah. and you ain't gonna find nothing better. Wow. You know what I mean? So. So so stay connected, whatever that looks like for you. And I'm I'm just being honest. Whatever that you know, looks if like. that's going to, to a building every Sunday to fellowship with other folks and sit under a, 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 a pastor with leadership and do that. Yeah, that's what the Bible tells you to do. It says obey, submit to your elders. Where else are you going to go do that outside of the local church? Again, I, I know when, whenever I do videos on the local church, people get upset. Generally, I find that's because they're not in the church. They're disobeying the command God gives. Now, there's, hey, if you're struggling to find a church, there's grace. But I would say be actively looking. Don't use that as an excuse to not go to church. I can't find a church. You know, there's many excuses people give. I can't find a good church. You couldn't find a good wife. You, you was out there hustling to find one. Same with a job. Get off your butt and, you know, go actively search. You know, many excuses, man. Church hurt. All. Guys, you've been so many excuses, and I found that none of them are actually valid excuses outside of persecution. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> your, or some physical sickness. Uh, very few reasons, actually, to not go to church or be in a biblical church. Hey, it might cost a little sacrifice. You may have to drive a little farther. For some of you, it might be moving. Again, uh, you know, these are things that I, I would argue that it's worth sacrificing for. If that's meeting at a house with a group of people who care about you and, and love you, then do that. If that's, you know what I'm saying, like, we, we on the road a lot. Sometimes we don't, we, we just be on the bus chopping it up. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, you guys are missing church for your tour. But look, that's church for us. No, you know what I'm saying? Church. So I'm just saying, whatever it looks like, you need to be connected to the Lord. Like, just make sure you're connected to people and connected to the Lord. And we're going to keep this thing going, man. We gonna, This is who we are. We can't, I can't, I can't be nothing. So that's church. Just them chopping it up on the road is just church. No, biblically, that is not church. I mean, you if you're a Christian, you're a part of the church. But church is also somewhere where the, where the body meets and the body has elders, deacons, and there's a church order and function. Again, uh, I, I know many people don't like this. It's because they redefine church. They, they want the first to be true without the second. The Bible talks about a lot of us have not been to church in now watch a this. while. Dang, we made it for you. So, so we, made, we uh, dedicate this album to you. And even coming from me personally, like, that's when I really found God for real was when I didn't go to church for a minute and really had to step out on my own yeah. and not really having nobody to tell me or force me or shove religion down my throat. And I really had to find that relationship with God. Well, it sounds like that's still still the case. You're still not going to church and listening to what God said to do. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying for myself? So 
Yeah, that that's how it relates to me personally. Yeah. Church ain't no building, man. Tell it's me. not a building, it's a people. Church. We the church, you know. The church saying? right so now. We was we just have church right now on the step. You, you, you know, again, a lot of this again, yeah, the church isn't the building, obviously. The church is the people. But you know, I'm getting redundant. The church gathers together. And it's not just on your stoop just talking about Christian things. No, there's an order. Our, uh, we did a little re release party, a little soul food Sundays, and it was like gold grills getting made. Shout out to Scotty ATL. You know what I'm saying? Free tattoos, uh, 116 tattoos, fried chicken, you know, macaroni and cheese, us rapping, my homie Tadashi teaching. What, T that? And that was, that was like, that's church for folks. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, it ain't got, it wasn't about a building. It was like, well, y'all did that in the building, <laughs> ironically enough. But church for Lecrae is getting getting tattoos, getting gold grills done. You know, we're going to do a little teaching. You know, where is that in the ancient practice? Because he talks so much about, you know, a lot of this is not ancient practice. It's capitalism, consumerism. That sounds exactly what you're railing against in this deconstruction video. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, now, there's some more interesting stuff. And of course, we got to get into uh, woke Cray. So let's get into it. Little by little, this family moved toward conservative evangelicalism and um and and i and i embraced it i love the 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 weightiness of the thinking and the you know i'm a thinker so i liked oh wow there's a process for this i love all of these particular things but then i began to realize that as much as they thought about scripture there was not a lot of thinking about social and cultural realities Right. And partially lack of exposure to diverse communities and diverse cultures. And so some of these things that that were important in that circle were like you couldn't do anything with tangibly in the real world. Now, I thought this was an interesting um, depiction of kind of his conservative background, reform background he comes from, because he, he pretty much says they're all all head knowledge and they don't care about social issues of, of minority people. It's essentially what he said. Um, and, you know, they weren't giving anything tangible where I, I thought that's interesting because Lecrae wrote songs about evangelism. That, that's very tangible. You know, there are many songs he wrote that con contradict some of this stuff. Um, and one, not every minority experience is the same so i i get i get sick and tired of you know y'all don't care about the problems of black people you know as if that's the same for every black person um and so yes uh, this is definitely coming from that social justice woke uh kind of ideology right and so now i'm i'm living in one of the 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 the, the most crime-filled environments amongst impoverished people and and nobody here needs systematic theology I would argue, yes, they do. They need systematic theology. And, and what we kind of have, what we're going to be presented here is the uh, social social gospel where, you know, what they, they don't need all this theology stuff. What they need is, you know, people helping them out with their physical needs. Well, I would argue their primary need is the first. They need good theology. Right. And yes, we can also help with feeding, clothing, all these things. These things are good. Right. But it is woefully insufficient. If that's all you're giving them. Right. That's not what they're looking for. So and, and let me address that. That might not be what they're looking for because they're looking for sin. <laughs> yeah, they're not looking for for God's word. Uh, of course not. That's because they want things that are not good. But you, the spiritual man, have to be the one to point them to their actual true need. Have you ever been doing that, had a conversation with someone and you actually have to point out their true need because they don't recognize it? Doctors do this all the time. People aren't looking for remedies. You know, sometimes they don't even know they have a problem, but they come in for a checkup and we give the real. I needed it to be relevant for this particular time. Now I'm spending time in this community and I'm being heartbroken by these realities. A kid like Trayvon Martin gets killed and I'm thinking everyone is having the same experience I'm having, right? We all know our Bible. We all know what Amos says about injustice. And we all know that the Bible says, you know, uh, mourn with those who mourn. And I said, hey, this kid died. And this is a kid like all the other kids that I'm mentoring. I feel bad about it. And I put that on social media. Well, the Christians that loved me every time I said go on mission trips or every time I said uh, pff, I broke something down in the Greek or Hebrew. We're now upset at me for talking. 
Well, this is actually a reduction of what actually what happened. It wasn't just, hey, Trayvon Martin got shot. We should all be sad about it. What was used to for that issue was brought out was and I, and I think the first issue that I remember was the Michael Brown issue uh, where people were using that to say black people are being systematically targeted and being unjustly treated by white people. And then if they didn't agree with that, they were being called racist. So this is actually historical revisionism. It wasn't, hey, man, a black person died. We should also be sad about that. That's actually not what happened. Um, it, it's, it's still not what's happening. About loving Trayvon Martin, and I didn't understand it. And I said, this doesn't make sense to me. So I thought maybe I should say it a different way, said it a different way, was bombasted and called a fool for that. Well, now I'm jaded. OK, I'm jaded. And I don't understand why my family is talking to me crazy. I thought you loved me and you love people like me. And I'm telling you, this is this is going on in society. But again, the framing of all this makes it seem like, oh, it's just, you know, you guys are hating on a black man who's just speaking up for his people when we were done wrong. Well, sometimes they weren't done wrong. Uh, again, sometimes they were. Let me be fair. But sometimes they weren't. And then the, you know, I'm, what, notice when all the riots were happening, these guys were justifying the riots and saying it was because of racism and, you know, trying to make some biblical arguments out of that. It's it, it's asinine. So I thought this one was particularly interesting. So I'm going to play this. I was buying into um, the the cultural norms or the cultural views that they had and not so much the ancient scriptural views. And um and I couldn't find those views articulated by anybody except for white men. If you started Googling ancient Near Eastern biblical truth, it's nine times out of 10 going to be a white male scholar. It's funny because he gave a resource in this was a, a white female. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, it, so it was like when when I don't like something, I'll say it's because it was a white person. White male said it. But when I do like something, oh, <laughs> Check out this white person who said this as well. It is irrelevant of the color of someone's skin. Is it true and biblical? Because guess what, Lecrae? What if someone did the opposite? Now, you would scream foul and racism. And I would argue, absolutely. What if someone said, hey, I don't hear none of these views except black theologians talking about it. So I ain't going to believe it until you can show me a white person saying it. You would say, hold on. Why is the color of their skin actually relevant to this discussion? And it wouldn't be. The issue is, is this biblical? Giving you insight on this thing. That's not a crime. But, but you're when you're <laughs> traumatized and struggling because you feel like educated white men are blasting you and, call, and, and telling you you're, you're, you're a heretic, that's not the voice you really want to hear from. So I found it very difficult to find an alternative voice. It's irrelevant. And the voices you started to listen to were atheists, black atheists. You know, he talks about it on his deconstruction song, which I've done a video on that, by the way. I'll try to link to it here in this video where he's the voices he starts to turn to were atheists. Yeah, yeah. You, you found the voice you weren't. Is that, you know, and so we're going to play one more clip. And bring this to a close. So this is where I say this is where deconstruction leads to. The thing about my deconstruction is and, and if you're human, this is probably most of us. There is going to be some some aspect of desire or fleshly desire or worldliness that you are going to feel like you can justify because you've let go of God, right? Off now, let me just amen what he's saying. Th this is where I've seen a lot of people deconstruct. It's because they want to, uh, there's a popular meme where uh, Scooby, like uh, the like Scooby-Doo, right, team, they they pull, they're like, who's under this mask? And it's a, you pull off the mask, and it's like the guy wants to live with his girlfriend, right? And generally, I've seen that to be true, where a lot of people, they just make excuses that I'm leaving a faith because it's all untrue. It's contradictions. No, dude, let's be real, bro. You just want to live with your girl. They want to do this particular sin. And now they have all the restraints off because they're not in the church. No, no Christians around for accountability. And so he's absolutely right on this point. Sometimes there's something that we want so badly that at the opportunity to let go of God, we'll take advantage of this thing. And 
yeah, he's right. But this is what happened with him with deconstruction. I, I don't see how he doesn't see that this is actually him. And I want to be gracious to, you know, and under, I want to be gracious and kind to, to not just harp on his past and just, boom, you know, but we have to point out just the reality of what happened. Right. Maybe you are in a relationship you shouldn't be in or you want to be in a relationship you shouldn't be in. And letting go of God is now in some way giving you a license mm -hmm. to do that particular thing. That's the snare of the enemy. Right. And that's the snare that I found myself in as well. I deconstructed. I said, I, psh, I'm throwing off this whole God thing. And what that said to me was, what is the meaning of anything? Right. If there's no God, is there meaning? Is there purpose? If I don't have God, I don't have purpose because if there's no God, I'm a cosmic accident. I'm just a random occurrence of atoms and molecules. Nothing I do really matters. And because I believe that or I wanted to believe that it also gave me license to make bad decisions because nothing I do matters. I, I would agree you know, what you think, what you believe, it actually dictates what you do to some extent, right? Uh, that's why theology is very important. But the problem, you know, so so let me just say this. A Le Lecrae went for a while and embraced atheism. Um, I, I don't know if this was ever talked about publicly. I guess he just kind of kept it to himself. Maybe this is why he uh, bashed the street preacher. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, he went to atheism for a, for a, for a season. Uh, which I, I found very interesting. So I've been wanting to. Sm oh, and, and let me just say this, because he deconstructed, that's where he went. And so I don't know how you can say a uh, deconstruction is healthy when it literally led you to atheism and all types of sin. We for a while since I've been saved and I ain't really done it, but I used to. It doesn't matter. Now I'm getting high every day. I've been wanting to be drunk and pop pills. So again i'm not gonna play the rest of that but he really goes on to talk about he started just uh doing substance abuse and just really being addicted to pills and like i said theology matters and just because you're not a christian doesn't mean you don't have a theology everyone has a theology of what they believe and uh things like that that philosophy ideology things like that lecrae went to atheism and said hey none of this matters and starts embracing uh substance abuse again I'm not happy for that. Again, I pray, I pray for him that he would find peace and things like that. Um, sounds like there's still a struggle going on there. Um, not Again, we all have our struggles, so that's not the point. I'm not trying to bash that particular issue. The issue is calling deconstructionism like healthy. I think that's the main problem. Again, it's a postmodern philo philosophy that's not, in, not meant or intended to uh, have someone hold on to biblical fidelity and orthodoxy. I mean, again... I don't know how you can see like, yeah, yeah, all this deconstruction was good and healthy. Um, but anyways, that's all I have to say about that. A bit long winded. A lot of this video was about the church, the necessity and the importance of it. Again, I remember Lecrae, uh, him, Lamp Mode, uh, or it was a Reach Records Lamp Mode album uh, where they did a album called The Church. Matter of fact, let me uh, let me actually show you some of the songs because this is the album that actually convicted me to get in a church. Some of y'all don't know this. The church called and collected. Um, man, they had some good songs on here. Um, my goodness. Uh, church Membership by Stephen the Le Levite. Go, go, matter of fact, if you disagree with me, if you, if you don't, go listen to this album. It is very good. Um, you know, where the marks of a true healthy church were brought out in this album uh, and so i think you'll be blessed i think you'll be encouraged by listening to that album and seeing some of the things i'm pointing out um, in this video so hope you enjoyed it till the next time grace and peace yo grace and peace thank you for watching another episode of all things theology if you enjoyed what you heard today go on and give me a like Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. 
You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Hey,